Okay, we're going to go ahead and, and start this evening. Tonight we have a public hearing for our proposed 2017-2018 budget. So at this time, I'm going to ask Darren Rice to present the budget. At the end of the, um, his presentation, I'll ask anybody who'd like to come and speak uh, to come to the podium, state your name, and if you'll keep your comments to two minutes or so, we'd appreciate that. So with this, Darren, I'll turn it over to you. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, and community members. It is my pleasure to present the 2017-2018 budget. I'd like to start each of our budget presentations with financial highlights for the previous year. Um, one new update, uh, we just received our superior rating for the year ended August 31st, 2016. That's updated, perfect score this year. Um, the district continues to get recognized from the state comptroller's office with our transparency presentations. We received transparency stars for our traditional finances, debt obligations, and contract and procurement presentations. Each of those presentations can be found on the district's uh, transparency website. We've also received a five-star rating from Texas Smart Schools. Texas Smart Schools was formerly known as the FAST Report, and it highlights success in two dimensions academic performance and cost-effective finances. Conroe ISD is one of three districts that has received five stars for seven consecutive years. Our 2016 ERG position, ERG stands for Education Resource Group, and they perform an analysis of the 200 largest districts, and ranking is done on academic and financial performance. And the goal is to be in the 1-1 box, and if you look on the graph there, you see that red dot? That's Conroe ISD in the red, red, in the, in the 1-1 box and we're currently ranked fifth. <clears throat> our 2016-2017 tax rate comparison, our tax rate of $1.28 is 48 cents lower than our tax rate was in 0506 when it was $1.76. We're 19 and a half cents below our peer average tax rate, and we're 15 cents below the closest district to us, which is Klein. Our general fund balance, this chart represents the fund balance of the general fund over the past 10 years. In 2007, our fund balance was $79 million, and we ended 2016 at $124 million. During this time, the board transferred excess fund balance from the general fund to capital projects, reducing adding new debt. The transferred amounts are identified by year in the red blocks, and the amounts and projects are listed below. We will now look at the major components that drive the budget, and they begin with our 2017-2018 budget objectives. And they include to meet the needs for the 2017-2018 school year, and that include, includes opening Bradley Elementary. And we want to provide a competitive raise for all and additional salary adjustments for identified areas. And we want to preserve funding for the 2018-2019 budget, where we'll be opening Grand Oaks High School and a new intermediate school. And as always, we want to achieve high academic outcomes in a cost-efficient manner. Our attendance data, state revenues and campus budget allocations rely on our enrollment data. This budget is based on an estimated increase of 1,400 new students and a 94% average daily attendance. Total enrollment is estimated at 61,360 students. It is important to note that the expenditure budget is based on enrollment However, our funding is provided based on our average daily attendance. Mm -hmm. This chart shows our growth of students per year over the last nine years. In 2008, 2009, we were at 47,996 students and we're estimated at 61,360 this year. Our certified property values came in at $33.8 billion. That was an increase of approximately $1.4 billion, or 4.25%. Now that we have discussed the major components that drive the budget, we will look at the effect that they have on the budget themselves, starting with the 2017-2018 funding estimate. Our tax revenue increase based on our 4.25% growth in AV generated $23.2 million. On the state revenue side, our 1,400 new students generate $11.5 million. Uh, the legislature increased our Austin yield with the passage of Senate Bill 1 at an increase of $7.5 million. However, due to the Robin Hood effect, and based on our 8.66% AV growth in 2016-2017, we will have a loss of $25.7 million, giving us a net state revenue decrease of $6.7 million. We increased our investment income by $1.7 million. 
And TRS on behalf, this is a pass-through that we have to account for each year. That increased by $1.5 million, giving us a total estimated available funding of $19.7 million. <clears throat> now looking at the expenditure side of the budget, this is our approved 2017-2018 teacher hiring schedule. It includes a raise of $1,125 for existing teachers and a beginning teacher salary of $52,500. Our 2017-2018 salary increase includes a general pay increase, 2% for professionals and 3% for non-exempt <coughs> staff, all of these on the midpoint at a cost of $7.2 million. We have police and auxiliary pay adjustments, $364,000. We have admin support, education and business adjustments, $162,000. We have instructional support and special ed adjustments, $201,000. And we have an adjustment to our bus driver beginning pay of $16 per hour for a total cost of $129,000, giving us a total salary increase of $8,114,731. Personnel for growth, this is in support of our 1,400 new students in the opening of Bradley Elementary. At the campus level, we have 105 new teachers, six professional and 14 and a half paraprofessionals. At the support level, we have 37 new support positions that provides us with 162.5 new employees at a total cost of $8,407,300. Our other expense detail, we have MCAD fee increase of 300,000. TRS on behalf, this is the other side of the pass-through. It increased by 1.5 million. An increase to our district contribution to TRS, 700,000. Supplies for the new campus and growth, 200,000. Utilities at the new campus and increased cost, 350,000. We're adding a technology mobile de device manager and web accessibility, 95,000. Fuel for our transportation, police, and maintenance departments, 150,000 and life cycle insurance and other 830,000 for other expense increase of $4,125,000. So now looking at the projected expenditure budget increase for 2017-2018 includes salary increases of 8.1 million, additional personnel of 8.4 million, a payroll budget adjustment, this is due to our reconciliation, we identified savings of $3 million. We have other expenses of 4,125,000 for a total budget increase of 17 million, $647,231. So now looking at the 2017-2018 proposed budget, at the revenue side, our amended revenue budget was $453.3 million. We had $19.7 million worth of new revenues, giving us a projected revenue budget of $473 million. On the expenditure side, our amended expenditure budget was $455.3 million. We have $17.6 million worth of new expenditures, giving us a projected 17-18 expenditure budget of $473 million, so we have a balanced budget. Our $17.6 million increase is equal to a 3.875% budget increase. This pie chart shows the budget broken down by major object, and 89.2% of our budget is payroll. 5.3% of our budget is contracted services. The largest item in there is utilities. Supplies and materials is 4.1% of our budget. The largest item in there is fuel. And equipment and other is 1.4% of our budget. The largest item in there is property insurance. <clears throat> this is the format that uh, later on this evening we'll ask the, the board to approve the budget. Um, it includes the general fund, the child nutrition fund, and the debt service fund. Our 2017-2018 proposed tax rate, we're proposing no change to our tax rate. It will remain at $1.04 for M&O, $0.24 for debt for a total tax rate of $1.28. <clears throat> this chart represents a forecast of our fund balance position at the end of the 2016-2017 fiscal year. And our objective is to maintain an unassigned fund balance of 25% of the annual budget, which is approximately three months worth of expenses. Our proposed budget for 2017-2018 is $473 million, and 25% of that budget is at $118.25 million. Our estimated unassigned fund balance at 831.17 is $128.3 million, which is 27.1% of the budget and $10.05 million over our objective. 
So here's our proposal for the fund balance surplus. We would like to save the surplus in the general fund balance to support the 2018-2019 budget. Once again, we're opening Grand Oaks High School next year and a new intermediate school. And then utilize the surplus to support capital projects, reduce bond debt requirements, and cover any unforeseen expenditures. Here's a quick pro forma of the 2018-2019 budget. It includes total revenue of $284.5 million, total expenditures of $497.7 million for a potential shortfall for 1819 of $13.2 million. This is just, go ahead. Can I, can I ask you yes, sir. something you. unique about yeah. um, our, this year, the, the tax values for the for CISD residents, would you mention that? how it's, it went down the appraised Yeah, value. the actual appraised value of the average home in CISD actually decreased by approximately $4,000, which actually is a $17 per year decrease in their actual taxes that they will be paying. That's unique this year. Yes, that is unique. <clears throat> and this is the information of the legislative session. They're still meeting, not a lot coming out of the legislature as of, I just checked before we came in here, so, so that's just information. And that is all. All right, at this time, we'll ask anyone who has a comment to come to the podium, state your name, and make your comments. How are y'all doing? My name is Matt Beasley. Let me adjust this a little bit. My name is Matt Beasley. I'm actually a product of Conroe Independent School District, and so is my wife. We graduated from the Woodlands High School. Um, I'm class of 2002. Actually, Dr. Stockton started with me at McCullough when I was in eighth grade, and he followed me till I was a senior. <laughs> and I joke often that I was the project he had to get done before he was promoted to superintendent the next year. <laughs> I have a tremendous amount of respect for Dr. Stockton. I walked in, I stood in the back. For any former, former student that he was a principal of, he would walk away from all you guys and come greet us. That's the type of person he is. I'm here because I have some issues with the budget. Mainly, I've been paying taxes to you guys since I was 24 years old. I haven't had any children in the school district, and that's just how paying taxes goes, and I understand that. Now my son is a kindergartner, and he's going to Powell. How do we live too close for him to ride the bus? My wife has two other children that she has to care for. When I went to school, you could get on the bus no matter where you lived, and I understand you guys have a tough job. I respect each and every one of you guys. This this is a hard job. And I, I, I called you and I missed your call, Miss Bush, President Bush. I appreciate you wanting to know my thoughts on that. It means a lot to me. But when the budget continues to increase, I'm almost to the point I can't pay for that anymore. I can't pay the increasing cost of my taxes in general. And during the budget presentation, when you compare your peer districts, I would like to know what the appraised value was for the other school districts we compared ourselves to. I don't know how many Twin Tower or Anadarko Towers are in Spring ISD, or the Master Plan Community of the Woodlands that has some of the highest property values in our region. So I appreciate your time and your careful consideration of this budget. I respect you. I don't, I'm not here because I want to cause any issues. Absolutely not. Thank you for what you do. Congratulations, Dr. Stockton. You've had a you've had a great career. I respect you a lot. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your concern. Thank you. Do we have any other comments? Okay. With that, the budget hearing closes, and I will turn it over to President Bush. All right. Call 
this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order, let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open, Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 614. Um, if you will please join us in rising, uh, Mr. Moore will lead us in the invocation and Mr. Husbands in the pledge. If you are so inclined and feel led to do so, would you please bow with me? God, you truly are the God of all people, in all places, at all times. We pause now as we experience these times of violence and threats of violence in our world, in our nation, and even in our own community. We pray for your spirit of peace, that all people would know that peace which passes all understanding. God, as we embark on a new school year with the excitement and the anticipation of what is to come, we pray that this year would be, above all, a safe one for all of our students, for all of our employees, that the children who come to us would be educated, that they would know that they are loved, that every single person affiliated with this district that these children come into contact with, that they would know that they are cared for and that they are loved and that we all want to see them succeed in life. We pray that you would place within them not only the knowledge of this world, but an unconditional love and respect for their fellow humans. We give you thanks for the educators, the administrators, the paraprofessionals, the support and the auxiliary staff whom you have called. This truly is their ministry, and they, they come to this knowing that uh, they're doing it for the children. We, we thank you for their service and all that they do for this community. Lord, as we set about the temporal business of this amazing district, we pray that your spirit of discernment would be upon all of us. Let us see with your eyes, let us hear with your ears, and let us love with your heart. Lord, we give you thanks for Dr. Stockton and his decades of service to this district. We celebrate his accomplishments and his sacrificial leadership for all of us. As this board journeys through this time of transition, we pray that you would give us your discernment, that you would help us seek what is best for the students, the employees, the stakeholders, and the citizens of this community. And we pray now that you would bless all that we do in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Join me in honoring our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the Texas flag, honor the Texas, Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Um, Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? No one has. All right. Um, item 3A, consent agenda. I have heard no request to remove anything. Madam President, I move we have moved, uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. All those in favor? All right. Consent agenda passed. Item 4A, consider approval of professional development waiver. Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'll ask Dr. Noll to come present this item, please. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. We come tonight seeking your approval to revise and renew our professional development waiver for the next three school years. Our previous waiver was approved to convert two school days to professional development days, giving us 178 instructional days per year. Last year, we added minutes to our school day to adjust to the, new, the state's new mandate uh, of 75,600 minutes per year. Therefore, we recommend that the new waiver request is for three days of professional development each year, giving us 177 days of instruction, while our teachers will continue to work 187 days. This will still give us more instructional minutes than we had two years ago, and will also allow for us to invest more in our professional teaching staff. Additionally, it will give us some flexibility in the calendaring process. Applying for this waiver will not force us to use it. It will simply allow you an option as we move forward into the 2018-2019 calendar. 
Uh, this waiver has been recommended by the district level planning and decision making committee. And at this time, I ask for your approval. I move the approval. I second the motion. All right. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Item 4B, 2017 preliminary star 3 through 8 and end of course results. Dr. Stockton. This time if Dr. Phillips and Mr. Caper come, come to the podium and present those results. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Jim Caker and I are here to share the preliminary STAR scores for 2017. These scores are not the final version yet, but Dr. Knoll will be here in the coming months to go into more detail with you. At this time, we really wanted to just give you an overview and let you know where we stand. Uh, STAR has been with us for six years, and since its inception, we have there have been significant changes to the assessment system every year. Um, we've seen changes in the design of the assessments. For example, um, the writing test used to be a one-day test, then it was a two-day test, then it went back to a one-day test. Uh, we've seen changes with time limits. It was an untimed test, a four-hour test, a two-hour test. Last year, we saw that uh, special education students in special education scores used to not count, and starting last year, they did. And this year is no different. We've had another change. So I want to kind of point that out to you before we dig in. In 2016, we had several versions of the STAR test. For example, STAR A was available to many of our students with disabilities. It allowed for certain accommodations that could be um, accessed by the students that needed them. We also had, last year had a STAR L version, which was the linguistically accommodated version for students who are new to the country um, and students who are learning English for the first time. This year there was no STAR L or STAR A, so that, that's one change that you're going to note this year. Every student, with the exception of a handful of students that have severe cognitive disabilities, every student is um, administered either the STAR on paper or the STAR online, there's just one version. So I say all of that to say this. It, it makes it really tough for us to learn very much from longitudinal data, but we will say that um, that we what, one thing that we're really proud about our students is that even in spite of this moving target year after year after year, we're very uh, proud of the accomplishments of our students. I think you'll notice that we continue to achieve high above the state's uh, achievement level and. Um, so the trends that we've seen in the past are continuing to, to show themselves. So here we go. In reading, you'll see in third grade reading and math, uh, CISD is performing at least 10% higher than the state. We're very proud of that. Fourth grade reading, math, and writing, again, uh, we are achieving more than 10% above the state, with the exception of writing. <laughs> close. <laughs> close. <laughs> close. Fifth grade, reading, math, and science, again, a phenomenal performance on behalf of our students and teachers. And then here we have the uh, sixth grade scores as well. So, Joe? Mm -hmm. Members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to uh, present our secondary results. Uh, as Dr. Phillips pointed out, um, we are looking this, at this uh, in comparison to the state, and as she had indicated, uh, you can see that uh, at seventh grade, reading, math, and writing, we are performing well ahead of the state uh, across the board. Uh, the same goes for our eighth grade students, um, reading, math, science, and social studies, uh, all performing extremely well, uh, and if you uh, move now to end of course with English 1 and English 2. Uh, while we're not where we want to be, we know we're ahead of the state and we're working to continue to improve. And if you look at Algebra 1, Biology and U.S. History, our results are very strong uh, with 89 percent in Algebra, 91 percent in Biology, and 97 percent in U.S. History. So. Uh, preliminary results, but a strong showing for Conroe ISD. And uh, much credit goes to our teachers and administrators on our campuses for working so well with our kids. Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, item 4C, elementary and secondary summer school report. Dr. Stockton. Okay, I think I'll ask um, Dr. Phillips and Mr. Taker <laughs> to present that. Since they're standing there. Yes. Good evening. Jim Kaker and I appreciate the opportunity again to share information with you regarding our summer school programs that have just wrapped up. We've been very busy this summer, but uh, most importantly, our students have been having a lot of fun learning. So our elementary summer school programs, are this, many of them are exactly the ones that we offered last year. I'll be going into more detail about each of these in just a minute. And these are the locations where our summer school was held. We, uh, Shelly Winkler and I and Jim were debriefing the other day and we had to note that it was the smoothest summer school opening that we've had in a long time. Uh, these are, are very uh, capable assistant principals that have taken the helm as principal and so we were really impressed with what we saw. Um, I do want to note, typically our, our principals are here to meet you but because tomorrow was the first day of school we went ahead and gave them a break on that so they could get ready <laughs> so once again we had the passport to learning and tuition program it's a uh, program that really targets students that attend title one campuses to to support them in the areas of reading writing math and science we do also offer this uh, to, out, to schools outside of Title I for parents that want to pay tuition. And so this year we had 1,107 students that came from Title I schools participate, and then we also had 55 tuition-based students for a, a total of 1,162 students. The other program is our bilingual program that we off, offer every year. As you know, the, the federal government uh, the federal government requires that we offer this for pre-k and kindergarten students our kids in conroe are, are very lucky to be able to also attend if they're first and second grade bilingual students the dates for these it was a half a full day program from june 7th to june 29th and we had 891 students participate the ESL program is very similar. This targets students who, are, who speak English as a second language. Uh, we have 75 different languages uh, spoken in Conroe as of today. And so this really helps support students as they are acquiring that second language. We had 218 students participate, pre-K and K students, and then it was also offered to first and second graders. The reading and math camp is available for students who have had difficulty passing the STAR test in reading or math. And so it's that last um, uh, intervention at, to help them pass the third time. It's a half day program and we had 435 students participate. KidQuest Enrichment. This is a robotics course that we have offered over the past few years. It was at Bosman and Vogel. Very, very uh, popular course where students are first introduced to robotics. We had two half-day sessions and a total of 83 students. Extended school year services are offered for those students with disabilities who require intervention during the summer in order to prevent significant regression. Um, again, uh, full day programs, we offered two sessions. We just finished up the second session August 3rd and we served a total of 52 elementary students. And Early Start was a new program that we had this year. We wanted to try something new. So we had two campuses, Runyon and Anderson, that piloted this. Uh, Runyon had 60 students, Anderson had 90. And the idea was we wanted to see if we could help overcome the summer regression that many of our, our kids experience, especially our younger kids. So we had students show up two weeks before school started instead of having summer school immediately after kids got, get out, we had it right before school started. Uh, many of the teachers involved in the program were working with the students that would be theirs this year, and so it gave them a head start to get to know the kids, build the relationships, and help catch them up. So we're looking forward. We, we have, we're still looking through the data to see the impact, but we're looking forward to finding out how that went. Here's the, the cost, the funding and expenditures. You can see that uh, we received state and federal funds of $927,240. Uh, we also put in some local sources from bilingual and special education local funds. And then we also uh, brought in $21,326 on tuition. Total expenditures were $1.2 million. And so just to kind of wrap it up, we served in elementary 2,991 students. We had eight different locations throughout the district. 
248 teachers, 46 paraprofessionals, and nine administrators. It was a busy summer. So now I'll pass it over to Jim Kaker. Thank you. So uh, as you'll see, um, summer school for us is really like a, a, you know a, a small school district running a summer program. And uh, this year again, we had five sites at the secondary level. Um, we moved from Conroe High for our high school program to McCullough this year because of the construction that we knew would be going on at Conroe. Um, all of these sites and all of those leaders did a great job for us. Um, again, the programs that we have for summer school uh, are really focused on two things, um, credit recovery for high school students, uh, but also initial credit at the high school level. And then for our junior high students, we have acceleration of credit opportunities as well as the um, equivalent of credit recovery, uh, students that didn't do well to be able to um, retake the STAR test and also to gain credit from a course they may have failed in the summer uh, as part of uh, the state requirement. And then we have the ESL Academy that we offer in the summer to junior high students and high school students along with uh, a GED program and then the extended school year for uh, our special needs students. Um, at the online accelerated credit, credit initial credit um, as I said, it's primarily targeted toward junior high students where they can accelerate in math uh, up to geometry and then uh, at the initial credit uh, offering that we do at high school, uh, you can see a number of courses there allowing students to have a little more flexibility in their schedules uh, so that they can do some other things as part of their high school experience if they determine that uh, they want to go to summer school and gain an extra credit or two they can take a different elective during the school year and make some room in their schedules which uh, tends to be popular. Uh, you can see that uh, financially um, we do a good job of working to uh, use tuition uh, to help support the cost of our summer school program. Certainly if we find there are students that need tuition support, uh, we're there to work with them and, and help them uh, with that tuition uh, responsibility. Um, in terms of our secondary summer school summary, uh, this year uh, we had good numbers again. We served uh, roughly 2,500 students uh, at the secondary summer school programs, uh, over 800 in the high school, over 500 at the junior high level, uh, 116 students in our ESL Academy, um, and you know a good overall performance, uh, 350 initial high school credits earned, uh, 552 repeat our recovery credits earned, so very positive overall to help our students be successful. And uh, we brought 1,647 students into the five locations for summer school, employed uh, over 120 teachers, uh, paraprofessionals, counselors, nine administrators, so uh, very busy uh, summer overall. Uh, totaling 4,500 students in 13 locations. As I said, it's like um, a small school district running in the summer. And I have to say, with a number of the people in the room tonight that are responsible for putting the summer school program together, we couldn't do it without the excellent support of our uh, support staff here in the district, everything from our financial services and our human resources departments for making sure that finances run and people get hired to, uh, you know, our custodial support that goes on all summer to keep these programs going and of course transportation which makes it possible for many of these kids to attend summer school. And this year um, we really turned a lot of the work of summer school over to uh, Shelly Winkler in the elementary office and she did a fantastic job of coordinating for the whole program. It ran as smooth as it ever has, as Dr. Phillips pointed out, and uh, we're just grateful to all of these folks that made it possible and grateful to you, the board, for supporting our summer school program because it really does make a difference for our kids. Any questions? No. Thank you very much. I have a comment I'd like to make. Yes, sir. <laughs> I just want to commend the entire administration and everyone here that we have such great intervention programs to try to make sure that our students aren't regressing 
but that actually they're progressing. I mean, many of the students in Mr. Caker that are coming back are taking these credits to add to their uh, resume, so to speak, so that they can take additional classes this fall and again next spring. And, and Dr. Phillips, the, the early start program, I made a special note of that. What an excellent program to make sure that we take care of those students that might be falling back so that you have that opportunity to build those relationships. And I just commend you and the entire team. Uh, great, great uh, presentation tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would like to echo that, but I want to ask a question. Did you say how many languages? 75. Wow. I checked today, 75. Well, to be honest, I didn't know there were 75 languages out there. <laughs> I made up a couple of myself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <clears throat> All right, item 5A, presentation of submitted names for Flex School 18. It's that time of year again. Uh, <laughs> we continue to build schools. I'll ask Dr. Null to come and present that information. Well, good evening once again. As Dr. Stockton said, it is that time of year. We're fortunate to be in this uh, position as we continue to grow and open new schools. Um, just a, a reminder of Flex 18, it is a uh, our new campus, you see it on this uh, map way down there in the lower right-hand corner, back in the Woodson's Reserve subdivision. And as we saw in Dr. Stockton's uh, presentation yesterday, it uh, looks right now to be a field of dirt. And I'm sure that Mr. Foster will show us a picture, but there's already a lot of work that's been done uh, underground, and it's beginning to take shape now uh, above ground. But this time next year, it'll be a beautiful campus and ready to welcome students. This is just a, a rendering of the front of that building. And just to remind you of our timeline uh, here with this naming process, we were here last month to initiate the process and uh, since then and all the way up through this past Friday, we've been accepting uh, name submissions via our website. Uh, that allows the, the public to come in and not only suggest a name but to also give their rationale and feedback as to why that name would be uh, appropriate. Um, tonight we'll share those names with you and then we'll return next month and ask for your consideration to name that school. Uh, over our uh, just a little less than a month of submissions, over 1,000 individual submissions came in. So our online feedback process is really effective. We, we get a lot of participation, so that's it's been great. I'm going to run through just the list and many of these folks may have had multiple you know, I, what I tried to show you here is each of the unique responses, and I have multiple pages, and I'm not going to read them to you. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, but we'll, we'll let these run. I'll, I'll kind of give you a minute or two to take a look at these, and then I'll, I'll switch to the next slide. Oh, look. Dr. Snyder again. They, they're not yeah. realizing their school name that right down the road. One and two. <laughs> this is the unabridged and unedited list. That you're saying, yeah. Only... All right, we'll go to the next one. Okay, uh -huh. next. And finally, our last slide. Uniform respect. <coughs> Uniform respect. I like that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know what doing important. Hey. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. I don't even know her. <laughs> any uh, any questions or comments no. on the process? Anything I could help you with? <laughs> I would like to make a statement uh, to the board. I have um, received more recognition than I need 
in my lifetime as superintendent of the Conroe School District and certainly more recognition than I um, ever deserved. So I'd like respectfully like to take my name off of this list and any future list also. So noted. Thank you. What else do you say? I necessarily agree to. We make no promises. That's about all. Okay. About all. <laughs> all right. Um, item we 5B, can... <laughs> select the design build project delivery method for life cycle replacement of the stadium scoreboard systems project. Dr. Stockton. <laughs> At this time, I'll call Easy Foster up to present that item. It's that time of, a time where our scoreboards at our stadiums are, are coming to the end of their life. So that's this item. Easy. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the design build project delivery method for the life cycle replacement of our stadium scoreboard systems. The district recommends that we select the design build project delivery method mainly because the scoreboard systems like these for the stadiums are typically very specialized uh, systems. They're bid in projects all the time as design build within construction projects. So knowing that and knowing our expertise within the district to be able to manage construction projects, we choose to recommend the design build method because we will eventually eliminate the need to pay the markups for an additional contractor to be intermediary between us and them. So in doing so, uh, we believe the design build delivery method provides the best value to the district. Once the delivery method has been determined, we will go through an RFQ process where we'll request qualifications from the marketplace for design builders. And that process goes a lot very similar to our typical construction manager uh, selection process. Once we've been through that process, we'll bring a selection back for your approval before we move forward with the project in the future. So at this time, we're requesting your approval of the design build delivery method. So moved. Second. Any questions? Commentary? All right. All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Foster. And 5C, capital improvements. Picture time. Yes. <laughs> and at this time, I would like to bring you up to date on what we have going on throughout the district. So starting with our network operations center, which is an ongoing project, it is progressing well over the last uh, several weeks since we were here last month. We've nearly completed the, trans the transition from the old data center to the new data center, such that now the contractor is underway dismantling the old data center to regain those spaces as office spaces for needed staff positions in the future. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at here is a nice picture because I'm running out of things to show you for this particular <laughs> project of the, uh, the conference break room that our technology department uses uh, more or less as their war room as they pound through the things that keep our business running. And then a photograph of our control center, which is the uh, simple seat with there's one person who's always wondering what's going on within our district and he actually stepped out of the picture because he did not want to be seen. <laughs> now our life cycle project, which where we're replacing things other than school boards, uh, as we uh, talked about earlier, uh, this is roofs and all kinds of other fun things that wear out over the course of a building's life. So since we were with you last month, I'll show you what we did at Creighton Elementary School where we completed the rehabilitation oh, of their wow. parking lots. Uh, the project is complete has been serving the campus well as they've been hosting activities leading up to the start of school tomorrow. At Gladys Elementary, last month I showed you in-progress project uh, photographs of their gym cafeteria floor. It has since been completed as well as their library has been put back together and is brought back in service. At Giesinger Elementary, uh, we have also replaced their gym cafeteria floor. Uh, that project is complete and they're ready for school tomorrow. At Haley Elementary, uh, we've been doing lots of things at Haley, but for this particular contract, we replaced the roof of, of that building. So that project is mostly complete. The big containers and the things that are, uh, the equipment and the trash containers and the materials are gone. The contractor is still going to be on site for the next couple of weeks, buttoning up details in the evenings and weekends to complete that project. 
at Conroe High School. Uh, last month I showed you the tennis courts that had just been started. We have since resurfaced them, so they have a nice fresh surface to enjoy for this coming school year. At Hawk, uh, we have we did the gym. The, the last month uh, we started the fume hood for the chemistry, so we've added some additional facilities there so that the science programs can teach uh, the uh, full science curriculum. At Oak Ridge High School, we have completed the uh, re refurbishment of their track surface, so it's new lines, new stripes, what we would typically do about halfway through a track's life cycle. At College Park, again, we have completed their tennis court uh, surfacing, so they've got a fresh new surface to play on this coming school year as well. At Cryer Intermediate, uh, we have upgraded the boilers of that building, so they have reached the end of their life, life cycle, so they're, they were a replacement under their normal cycle. Moving on to another project, this is Knox Junior High in the Woodlands Transportation Center. This is where we added uh, science classrooms to Knox Junior High to handle the uh, capacity of that, or handle the population for that building. So you can see the classrooms are set up and ready for school to start first thing in the morning. We will have contractors on site to ensure that that campus is operating smoothly for its first day of school. Uh, their prep rooms are all together, and like we said, we've been moving around that campus uh, scrubbing and cleaning and I'd like to throw a shout out to our custodians and our purchasing department because they've played a big role in getting that campus done and turned over on time with our shortened summer with our district of innovation process we engaged uh, this year as well. Our field house addition which is the increased population capacity for our football and, and the other boys programs uh, where we were short uh, that project is also accepting and they're handing out football equipment and things for the first part of school. Uh, we did have a little bit of snag with Entergy on the back side of that project. The contractor's still out there working, but the, the building itself is useful, and we've got plenty of room for them to have safe football practice around us. At our transportation center out there with the Woodlands, which is the other part of this project, we've been able to create some additional office space for the increased staff in our transportation department, and we've also given some uh, increased our lounge space for the interior and given them some exterior lounge space where they can and keep the bus drivers more comfortable in the in-between times between their routes rather than sending them home in the middle of the day. Now our safety and security project, I've got some good pictures to show you of this one this year. This project is moving forward on schedule. We had a lot of work to get done over the summer to get our front offices uh, back in, in, set, in working order. And then the, the project continues on through the end of this calendar year. Uh, but we at Armstrong, we uh, update, upgraded the security of their front entry. At Creighton, we also upgraded the security of their front entry, as well as Haley, Hawk, Knox, Travis, San Jacinto, Oak Ridge Elementary, and Wilkerson. So those projects are, are ongoing. There's still details to be buttoned up, but all of the, the front entry areas, all the reception areas, are functional. I've been receiving students for registrations and are going to be wide open for school to start first thing in the morning. Moving on to Lucille J. Bradley Elementary School. Uh, this school is opening for students for the first time tomorrow. And just like at Knox, we will have our contractor and have presence on site to make sure that building opens very smoothly uh, because it'll be under its full load for the first time tomorrow morning. That's not uh, a for sale sign out there. Is it? No, that is, that, is, that, is a, for dad or something. that is a Cub Scout sign. Cub so uh, it has been actively receiving and, and hosting events for the uh, local community. Uh, for the last several weeks. Uh, the interior is, is coming together nicely. The uh, classrooms are set up and the teachers are all eager and excited to go, go into the education environment tomorrow. And Grand Oaks High School, this project is on schedule, scheduled to open in August of 2018. So we're about a year away from opening this campus. As you can see, the uh, outline of everything is there. So if it's going to be on that site, it is underway currently. You can see very clearly the baseball, the softball, the football, the tennis, and all the athletic facilities are, are progressing very nicely. Uh, the building itself is coming along very well. So this is just a look from the inside. So you're going to get to start seeing this building come together. Uh, it's a very impressive facility. And this is a, a view uh, through Main Street into the Dining Commons Library, looking back into the fine arts and athletics wings of the building. Uh, and this is just kind of give you an idea of what the uh, insides or the guts of our auditoriums look like. And it is uh, progressing just as we would uh, like it to. 
Flex 18, which we're, if you were at Celebrate Our Schools yesterday, it's going to look like we made a lot of progress on the night. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> uh, we were in the paving portions of that project, and the, and the building structure is being erected. Uh, so the, the building slab is moving just ahead of the building steel, uh, so it is on schedule. It is scheduled open at the same time we open Grand Oaks about a year from now. And you can see it's coming along very well. So another major project we had underway is at Conroe High School. This project is on schedule, scheduled to be complete in December of 2019. So the first phase of the project was really to get the infrastructure and all the stuff on the campus done so that we can facilitate school while we're under construction. So you can see just from the overhead view, we did a lot of utility work. We relocated the bus loop, which was formerly uh, Wilson Road around the construction site which is on the left hand side of the screen have all the the air conditioning and plumbing and all the other infrastructure for the cooling and the chillers and all the other electrical upgrades we had to do to make this project happen all that stuff is underground uh, the project is complete exactly uh, where it needs to be for school to open tomorrow we've been working with security officers uh, to make sure we facilitate uh, student traffic from the main campus to the annex to the rotunda and the band hall and the, the CTE buildings in the back. So we're looking here from the main building towards Longmire Drive and then we've got a bus, a clear bus drive all the way through the middle of the campus uh, and everything is scheduled to open. Here we will also have a presence on site tomorrow to ensure that everything operates smoothly and then we're going to jump headfirst into the construction of the building addition uh, as soon as the uh, traffic slows down. And the, the purpose of phase one is to build so that we can build a classroom addition, which will actually house the students as we move throughout the main campus doing our invasive maintenance pro progress and upgrading the air conditioning systems and electrical systems in the main portion of that building. And that is our update. All right. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item 6A, consider award of RFP uh, number 17-01-01A contracted educational services professional development and educational consulting services. Okay, Mr. Rice, if you'll come up for not only that item, but the several items after that. Yes. Long list this evening. Good evening once again, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees Award RFP 17-01-01A for contracted educational services, professional development, and educational consulting services, August 2016, to the 12 vendors listed on the attached tabulation for an estimated annual expenditure of $180,000. In accordance with state law and board policy, the district must procure certain types of professional services through a, through a competitive procurement process. This is a reoccurring monthly process for these items, and currently, if we approve these, there will be 88 vendors included in this bid, and our annual spend is estimated at $1.5 million uh, for the whole project. Um, at this time, I recommend your approval. All right. So moved. I second the motion. Right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes. Uh, 6B, consider award of RFP. Number 17-05-04. All right, I'm recommending the Board of Trustees award RFP 17-0504 <laughs> for water treatment services and supplies and for an estimated annual expenditure of $150,000 to Kim Aqua Inc. Request for proposals pertaining to water treatment services and supplies for the district were emailed to 23 vendors through our electronic e-bidding system. The proposal was also advertised two times in the courier. Three vendors submitted a response. Vendors were asked to offer a fixed price for water treatment services and supplies. The contract shall remain firm through August 31st, 2018, with the adoption, with the option to renew annually for two additional one-year terms through August 31st, 2020. Proposals were evaluated by the CISD Maintenance Department, Mr. Paul Procurious at <coughs> Procurious and Associates, Inc., and reviewed by the Purchasing Department. At this time, we recommend your approval. All right. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Just one question. Yes, sir. How many of our schools are not on public water, of wherever or household? An, an estimate? Just an estimate? They're not on public water or not on, on well, water? Well, on water that we have to treat. Fair enough. 
All of them, we treat all of them. That protects the inside of our pipe from degradation of the pipe system itself. Well, I, so have learned, I have learned something today. Myself. Thank you. <laughs> I might need to treat my house. Yeah. <laughs> water <laughs> softening. <laughs> Mr. Husband, you do understand it's, it's for the water inside the pipe, not for drinking water. I, I, I do understand that. Yes, sir. Anything else? All right. All those in favor? All right. Item 6C, consider approval of the 2017-2018 official school budget. It is my pleasure to recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2017-2018 official school budget as presented and discussed in the public hearing and as recommended by the District Level Planning and Decision Making Committee. The, bu the budget is attached to this item in a format that is required for approval that is by first by fund and function and second by fund function and major object at this time i recommend your approval no, not yet. motion so moved second second all right um I, discussion real quick i really want to point out what darren and dr stockton and i have been talking at length about over the last uh, few days um, he did an amazing job yesterday in pointing this out, Dr. Stockton did, in, in our Assembly of Schools. And again, today at a presentation, um, our state funding keeps decreasing. And I, I know we had a public comment about the, the consequences that the appraisals are having on our taxpayers. And that is not something that this board takes lightly at all. Um, unfortunately, we don't control that. Um, what we control is what we're doing to provide the best education possible for our students at the lowest tax rate possible. And I think that this board has overwhelmingly done a very good job of that. With opening a brand new school this year and having a budget increase of less than 4% um, with continuing to take care of our, our staff. But when you boil the numbers down, and, and I, asked, I asked Mr. Rice to look at this for me, in 2009-2010, our state funding was $121 million. If you noticed on this budget, our state funding is less than $100 million today. And in that time, our enrollment has increased by over 23%, almost 24%. Yet our state funding's decreased this year, it'll be at 25% of our state budget. That's, that's a huge disparity. And so, you know, we have everywhere across the board asking for property tax relief, but that needs to come from the state. We need true public education finance reform at the state level for us to be able to do anything about that. Um, today, if we were funded from the state at the same 40% that we were funded in 2009, we would have $80 million more coming from the state. That's a lot of money that our local taxpayers are making up that could provide tax relief for them in a lower tax rate. So I, I really wanted to drive that home because I know that we are seeing the push for property tax relief and we're, we're hearing comment about that. But this board, unfortunately, with having the state decreasing our funding every single year we can only do so much and so i really wanted to make that really drive especially when you pointed out to me that the actual physical amount of dollars had shifted it's not just a percentage right we're actually getting less money than eight years ago that's a big deal so that's a great point I'd like to commend Mr. Rice and his staff in, in yes. working so hard to give us a balanced budget. Um, I've looked at some of the other budgets from our surrounding districts, and at least their initial presentations, many of them, are looking at running a deficit budget this year. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a big deal for a district this size to be able to present a balanced budget, and I commend you and your staff for working so hard to bring that. Thank you. Darren is known, I don't tell you anything you don't know, but he's known statewide as an expert in the formula. And uh, he, he gets this district so much efficiency from using the formula to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're getting less money, but you should see it if he didn't do his math. Oh, yes. And you know, it's, it's really critical how you put the components together because it's not just how much tax you pay or what the appraised value goes up because 
one thing robs from the other. I mean, you give it to the left and it takes it from the right, and he's a master. So I commend Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Well, Thank and you. we've seen other districts that are raising their tax rate because of this very issue. Our, our neighbor to the south, South Spring ISD, went up by four cents. Um, we're seeing other districts that have uh, not the enrollment growth that we have that are having larger budget increases, even though we have higher enrollment growth. And that, that says something about the way that it's managed at our administrative level. Um, I really appreciate the hard work that y'all put in. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? I'd like the floor, if I, if I may. Uh, my comments are around just in general, I think a lot of places are really watching budgets very closely. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, you know, we're having to increase our budget, but a lot of that increase is in the growth yes. of our school district. And if our school district continues to grow, then we're going to continue to build schools and we're going to continue to be the largest employer in the county. And we're going to continue to do that. Uh, in my mind, what Mr. Rice started off with, we are probably, I'm going to just stick my neck out there and say probably the most financially efficient school district in the state of Texas and probably in the United States of America. And we've got some bond folks here tonight that are going to help us to try to refinance some of our debt. Uh, and one of the reasons that we can refinance our debt and get a lower rate is because we are so financially strong. If we weren't strong, we'd have a lot of other issues uh, that, that other school districts may be having. And so I just want to make sure that we get out there and get the message out there to the public because people are going to say, well, you, you just voted to increase your budget. Well, we didn't nonchalantly vote to increase anything. There's a lot of work that goes into that. There's a lot of review that goes into that. We've actually lowered our tax rate uh, a cent and a half over the last six years. Uh, yes, assessed values went up, but that money doesn't go to, to the Conroe ISD. It goes to the it state goes, of Texas yes. through what's called the Robin Hood Act. And we don't have any control over that, uh, as, as Mrs. Bush said. So I, I really feel very strong that we have a very good, financially efficient budget. Yes. Uh, we've had reports here tonight that show the academic excellence that we have in our school district. And, uh, and in a minute, we're going to get to see that because of our strong bond rating, we're able to go out and finance debt at un, unheard of rates before. And if you look, that, that has been a, a product that we continue as a board to seek to reduce our uh, cost of funding debt as much as possible. We spent $33 million out of cash this last year to fund projects that we could have gone out and gotten debt for. But again, being financially efficient, we haven't had to go do that. And I think that I think that others want to always criticize that we're having increases, but you really got to look underneath and really understand what's going on. And I believe that we have a, uh, a really, really good school district, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, very much in favor of approving this budget. One, one last quick comment. The 3.8% does not tell the story, because when you look at a business or somebody who increases their budget 3.8%, because of the growth, as Mr. Sanders pointed out. I don't know what percentage of that 3.8% is because of growth and is not, but I do know this. We spend roughly $800 out of, instead of 7,000, we spend 6,200. Is that close enough? Very close. $6,200 per student, consistently always behind the state average. And so that tells the true story that we're really not increasing at all. Mm -hmm. Our increase is because of students. Right. So it could argue, be argued that the 3.8% is entirely because of the growth. I, I don't know that for sure because the cost of electricity or gas or sure. whatever can go it's up. But I can, I can say when it works out, we're behind that state average. And that tells the real truth of, that we're cost efficiently educating children along with a graduation rate successfully. Well, and that's what that's what, that's where the rubber hits the road. And I'm, I'm sure Mr. Moore's experienced this as well. But school finance is a completely different animal than you know your other local entities. Um, it, it is a completely different model. And comparing, you can't compare a county tax rate to or a city tax rate to a, a public education system. You can't compare it to the district. And so, really, when we are looking at our 
our district, we have to compare against other districts. Otherwise, it's apples to oranges. And when you look around, we have the lowest tax rate besides Houston ISD in the entire area, the entire Houston Metroplex. That's huge. And yet we're growing at the rate that we're growing. Most districts that are growing at this rate aren't able to keep their tax rate at the rate that we have. And so I really, I want that story out there. And, and it was just very important to me that we had a little discussion about this because as Mr. Sanders says, this isn't something we take lightly as a board. So. Can I add something? Um, we've been, and I want to commend the board, we've been very consistent over the last 14, 15 years um, in your commitment to tax rate, keeping the tax rate as low as possible. Uh, when you look at that same time, you look at all the efficiency reports uh, of school districts in the state of Texas, we're the only district that has been recognized year after year after year after year after year. And that's a really important that our taxpayers can know where we are yes. and not have to react to um, the, in, the different environments that occur over the years. So thank you for your consistency on that. Thank you. And anything else? All right. Um, all those in favor? The budget passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice, and all of your team. Y'all are right all right amazing. Thank you. Uh, item 6D, consider, adopt, and set by order slash resolution the 2017 ad valorem tax rate. Let me go ahead. Okay. Tonight, I am recommending that the Board of Trustees approve the attached order resolution to adopt a 2017 tax rate of $1.04 for maintenance and operations and $0.24 cents for debt service per $100 of taxable, taxable valuation to fund the 2017-2018 official school budget. As, as has been presented and discussed, the above noted tax rates are required to, to fund the maintenance and operations and debt service budgets for the 2017-2018 fiscal year. The total combined tax rate of $1.28 per $100 is the same as the prior year. At this time, I recommend your approval of the 2017 tax rate. I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of $1.28 per $100, which is effectively a 2.94% increase in the tax rate. Second. I second the motion. All right. Um, as we, we did last year, I want to make sure we note, yes, we have to phrase it this way to where it says it's an increase. That is because of the assessed values. It is not that our rate is going up. I know we had much discussion just now about that, but I really want that on the record. Um, and as Mr. Rice pointed out uh, earlier during the public hearing, the average home in Conroe ISD has actually seen a valuation decrease. A lot of this increase in assessed value is because of new property new, new coming home. online. And so that's that's a big deal. And so I wanna make sure when getting this that that's noted. All right, anything else? All those in favor? All right, motion passes, tax rate is set. Item uh, 6E, transfer of unassigned fund balance to debt service fund. Yes, I recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the attached resolution authorizing the transfer of $16 million of unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund. The above noted fund balance transfer of $16 million is required to service the debt during the 2017-2018 fiscal year and minimize the 2017-2018 tax rate. I just have uh, a presentation here. We've seen this every month. This is just showing that we do have the fund balance available uh, to perform this transfer. Right. At this time, I recommend your approval. Any questions? Mm -mm. So moved. Second. <laughs> uh, any discussion? I just have a quick question. Yes, what sir. will be our percentage after that transfer is made? Our percentage of? In the, of the fund balance. As a uh, we're estimating it, uh, I can't remember, 27%, I think, was, okay. was where we were at. I mean, I, I, I thought it was that. I just want to make sure. No, I'm sorry. Not 27%. 
What were you going to say, Mr. No, no, nothing. Yeah, yeah, 20, 27% we'll, we will have right. compared to our budget, if that's what you're right. asking. That's what I'm asking. And yeah. that's at the end of the That's the end year. of you know, 16, 16, 17. You, this your year. projections for correct, for 18 and okay. Correct, correct. Right. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, those in favor? Motion passes. Item 6F, Chapter 41 status, consider option selection for property wealth reduction per resident student. Mr. Rice. Please bear with me, this is kind of <laughs> long here. I recommend that the Board of Trustees select option three, purchase of attendance credits from the state to reduce its wealth per resident student. Conroe Independent School District's wealth per resident student and weighted average daily attendance, or WADA, is estimated by TEA at $453,330. Conroe ISD's wealth level falls between the equalized wealth levels of $319,500 and $514,000 as established by the TEC. Districts whose identified wealth level falls between $319,500 and $514,000 per WADA are not required to pay recapture unless their adopted tax rate exceeds the compressed rate plus six pennies. Under current law, a district with property wealth per WADA above $300,000 and 19,500 must select one of the following five options to reduce its wealth per resident student. And those options are to consolidate with another district, detached property, purchase attendance credits from the state, which is option three, that is what we're recommending. They can contract to educate non-resident students or consolidate tax bases with another district. Since Conroe ISD's wealth per resident student has not reached the recapture EWL of 514,000, the, the selection to reduce our wealth per resident student is simply an administrative process. TEA recommends that districts in our property wealth position choose option three, since it is the least extreme of the choices available. The district feels that option three is the most appropriate selection. At this time, I recommend the board select option three, purchase of attendance credits from the state. I move we approve as presented. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. All right. Item 6G. Consider and adopt an order authorizing the issuance of Conroe Independent School District unlimited school tax refunding bonds. I'm going to stop there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before I get started, I'd like to point out we have Mr. Tom Sage with Andrews Kurth. He'll be here yes. to answer any question. And then Mr. John Roebuck, the district's financial advisor, is here to answer any questions. And Mr. Roebuck will have a, a quick presentation for us on this item. At this time, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the order authorizing the issuance of Conroe Independent School District unlimited tax school refunding bonds, setting certain parameters for the bonds, authorizing the superintendent and chief financial officer to approve the amount, the interest rate, price, including the terms thereof, and certain other procedures and provisions related thereto. The parameter order is for the sale of Conroe Independent School District refunding bond series 2017. The district expects to issue approximately $96.4 million in refunding bonds. The current estimated savings in debt service is approximately $10.5 million. This represents a savings of 8.3% on the projected debt service for the refunded bonds. At this time, I'd like Mr. Robach uh, to come and present the schedule of events. Thank you, Mr. Rice, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, before I get started, uh, I'm going to kind of skip around here. Uh, the schedule of events, we always have rating calls when we issue bonds, and we had rating calls last week with Moody's and S&P. Now, currently, your, your ratings are very high, AA plus and AA1, which is one notch below AAA. Uh, Mr. Rice did a fantastic job presenting the district in a great light, um, budget, financials. Um, in fact, after the call with Moody's, he said, do you have any more questions? And we started asking about upward pressure on the rating. And the, the analyst got quiet for a while. And he said, guys, he goes, I'm looking at this and I don't see how come you're not AAA. <laughs> so oh. I'm not saying and not promising it's going to happen, but it was very positive news. Very, Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, and that came from both rating companies. Now, S&P does not have a well, – no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, no district has a AAA rating yeah. from yeah. S&P. Not, so, 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 so yes, not, not, not without the guarantee. Without the guarantee. Yeah. Right. Question. Yes, sir. Okay. Just cold turkey, yes. 
in basis points? What's it worth? What's the difference? Probably, probably two basis points. Two. It's, 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 you're okay. already there. You're already we had the awesome. AAA, yeah, PSF, and, and actually if we both got AAA and both of them, and Tom, correct me wrong, we wouldn't qualify for PSF at that point. You couldn't get it. So it's kind of nice having that backstop. So at least one AAA rating. Again, I'm getting way ahead of myself. We'll find out later this week. <laughs> I don't want to promise anything, but it, it was very positive. That's probably the most positive I've ever heard. One, of one thing I've noticed from you is all you want to do is bring good news. Hey, yeah, we, we like we like that. Not going to lie. Well, this interest rate environment. <laughs> I was gonna say, what's gonna happen in a couple of years when everything's like six percent? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Well, with that being said, <laughs> thank you for having me out. Uh, we do have a refunding opportunity, but I thought that was in, in light of the budget and the tax rate. I thought that was great news, and, and hopefully some positive news comes out later this week. Um, before you have presentation, let's see here. Whoops. Is this this one? I'm eventually figure this out. Oh, this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. Bond buyer index. Uh, the snapshot of the municipal bond market. This is the bond buyer 20. It's a general obligation. Uh, type of debt is district issues. Uh, weekly average of rates across the country. There on the far right, the current rates of 3.50%. Not where we were last year, but uh, to put it in perspective, you know we're 70 basis points off the all-time low and about 94 basis points, or almost 1% uh, below the historical average of the last 16 years. Still a great environment to, to refund bonds. And uh, I'll actually show you the bonds we're looking Oops, I did it again, didn't I? Sorry. We found four series of bonds that have interest rates ranging from 4% uh, all the way to 5% and interest uh, roughly 102,775,000 in bonds that provide economic savings to the district. Uh, we looked on a, on a maturity by maturity basis. Every single one of these uh, maturities generates over 3% PV or present value savings and negative uh, arbitrage of, of less than 50%. So they're all economically viable to, to refund this time. Which is again, didn't I? And then there's the fourth series there. And, and this is the, uh, the fun slide. Uh, if you go from left to right, you have your current debt service requirements there on the left, less the debt service on the proposed bonds to be refunded, about $159 million. And then the proposed principal and interest based on uh, current interest rates. Uh, so we're proposing to issue about $96.5 million, $96 million in bonds, uh, about $52 million in interest on those bonds. And then the next column is total debt service requirements, and then the estimated savings there is on the far right. Uh, ab about uh, $10.5 million in savings. Uh, we ran this about two weeks ago, three weeks ago for this presentation, so we had plenty of time for your packet. I ran them a couple days ago, and we're probably looking at a little over $11 million of savings based on the current market. I hope we can do a little better than that. You know, the rating obviously increased. If that happens, will help a little bit, but uh, the market's very solid. Uh, the next page is schedule events. This is kind of outdated now. Uh, we're here in the middle of this presentation, or the page here, Tuesday, August 15th, asking you all to approve the parameter order. Uh, we actually have the offering document ready. We've had the rating calls, which, which we should get the rating back again later this week. And because the market is and so it has a good tone right now, we're looking to probably sell on Tuesday of next week and then actually close on uh, Thursday, September 21st. Okay. Um, Anything else I'm missing here? Let me see you one second. We do have the permit school fund guarantee in place. So we do have the PSF in place. And uh, we are, again, asking you to approve a parameter order uh, not to exceed um, $135 million, I believe, in principal amount of bonds, which we won't do. That will be closer to $96.95 million. And uh, we want more than 5% present value savings. And as, as Mr. Rice pointed out, we're about 8 9, 8.3, but yeah. based on the current numbers, we're closer to 9% PB mm -hmm. savings. All right. Can we vote yet? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. We recommend your approval. <laughs> yeah, we do. I move it, it, said. I second. Okay. Any discussion? I, I have one question, and I think I already know the answer to it, but I want to make sure everybody knows. We're not extending any maturity no, right. at all, right? No, this is purely for interest yeah. cost savings. We're not extending the debt. So, so it's like if I were refinancing my mortgage and I had a 30-year mortgage five years ago and I refinanced it today, I owe 25 years. This is just refinancing it over 25 years if that were the case. That's correct. Okay. The, the, we right. are not issuing debt past the issuing, final year the bonds are refunding. That's what I expected. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Thank you. We, we do love good news like this. All those in favor? 
All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you, you very work. much. Thank you. Tom, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All Tom, right. Dan, thank you. Item 6F, financial reports. Mr. Rice. <laughs> I ran out of water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure tonight to present the financial statements for the month of July. As always, these statements include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet for the month. Our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balance. Each month, we like to look at our cash and investments, make sure that they're working for us. We'll concentrate once again on the general fund. We have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $1.6 million. We have investments in the state pools of $88 million. We have our short-term investments. That's investments less than one year of $44.6 million. And we have our investments with TCG Investment Advisors, $51.4 million for total cash and investments of $185.7 million. The next statement we'll look at this evening is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balances. Our revenues are broken down into three categories. That's local and intermediate sources, that's state program revenues, and our federal program revenues. If we look at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, we can see that in the general fund and debt service fund, property taxes is the largest generator of revenues for those funds. In food service, it's food sales and there's premium contributions in our self-funded insurance. Projected fund balance in the general fund, we just saw this. We're looking at a projected increase of $9.5 million. As we work through the audit process and everything, it would not surprise me if that inches up just a little bit. Fund balance in the debt service, once again, we just saw that for a $0.6 million increase, and that is after the $16 million transfer. Projected fund balance in child nutrition, we're looking at an increase of about $800,000 in that fund. And our 2015 bond referendum status update, uh, we currently have ex expended and encumbered $302.9 million. We have an estimate to complete or further expenditures of $212 million, leaving us with a projected forecast of the program of $515 million, leaving us with a, a, a a favorable variant or unfavorable I'm sorry contingency of 5.4 million dollars I would like to point out if we look at Grand Oaks High School we have decreased that project projected forecast by two million dollars uh, as was presented to the audit committee we did have some identifiable savings so that's about a two million dollars worth of savings and it includes items like the mass grading of the site reduction of the masonry project uh, field engineering spoils hauling wood paneling all these various projects added up to that savings uh, Self-funded insurance for the month of July, we had total revenues of $3.6 million, expenses $2.7 million. Now that does include, if you see on that line item, the rebate from Memorial Hermann of, of $1,060,000. And that le leaves us with revenues over expenses of $910,000 for the month. And participation at our wellness center, we had 375 mm -hmm. visits uh, for July. Still pretty close to a break even in it, mm -hmm. even in a summer month. Mm -hmm. Well, without that rebate. I mean, you know, it's not yeah. over, but it's not over, but it's looking at August, just to give you all an update to the fifteenth, we're at two point five million dollars already in claims. So August, yeah. you know, we're hoping we hang on there. Yeah. Our investments for the month of July. Par value of our portfolio was three hundred and ninety six point four million. Our pools were yielding one point one three percent. Our shorter term investments, 1.31%. Our investments with TCG Investment Advisors, 1.21%. And our combined portfolio, our WAM is 75 days, and we're yielding 1.18%. Our benchmark is the 90 day T bill, and that's yielding 1.06%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Yield curve, isn't it? Um, item 7A, executive session, um, we don't need to go into. So, um, next item. Last item. 9A. As you know, in June, you all recommended um, or accepted the superintendent's recommendation to propose the non renewal of the term contract teacher, Ms. Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez is, um, is allowed under Chapter 21, did request a hearing from the commissioner to contest her termination. A hearing officer has been appointed, and the district's prepared to go to hearing. In the event that we're able to reach a settlement agreement prior to that time, there's no 
indication one way or another whether we will or not, but we wanted the authority to do that, as we had discussed previously, and that's what we're requesting them tonight to authorize Dr. Stockton to negotiate a settlement agreement should um, the opportunity present itself before a hearing occurs. Madam President, I move that the board delegate authority to the superintendent to negotiate and finalize and execute a resignation and release agreement in docket number 146-LH-07-2017, Conroe ISD versus M. Rodriguez with the terms as previously discussed. Second. All right. Any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to decide if I can ask this question in open session. So, no discussion at this time, Madam President. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? All right. Motion passes. And it, it time is motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Seven twenty-four.